Hello, hello, hello. This is Pastor Eric here, pastor at the Overcomers Mercy Church in for kingdom with no limit. Our kingdom has no limit and our king is a wonderful God. Before we start, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, what, one thing that I desire is to serve you. One thing that I desire is to please you. One thing that I desire is to get close to you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you show your mercy and you teach us what you have for us. You give us what you have for us for, to better our faith and to grow in maturity. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. So, in our previous show, I was saying that uh, our plan and God's plan must work together. Okay? Our, go our plan and God's plan must work together. And that even if we plan some things out, we, it's, it's kind of difficult to know what, 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 to know to what degree God's plan influences our plan, all right? So it's quite difficult to draw a line between God's, God's control and human control. It's quite difficult because when I look deep into it, we, 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 are, we think we are free, but we are not really free. We have a certain God that also has certain, a certain margin, a certain margin, a certain percentage of control over the affairs of men. Okay? So I believe, I believe that life is a combination of three will or three plan. God's plan, your plan, and, and natural law plan. That's what I think. Uh, my own wisdom and research made me find out this. God's, in order to execute, in order to live a life, you're going to face God's plan. You're going to face your own plan and, no, and like natural law planning. Okay? So, one thing I know is that God's plan, okay? One thing I know is that for God's plan to work, I will surely, it will surely influence most of your decision, especially if you are a person of covenant. So, for God's pre-designed plan to work in an individual's life, he is going to be influenced, surely influenced, okay, mostly by human decisions. That's, that's a fact. That's just a fact, okay? Yes, mostly human decision will be influenced if God's plan will have to work. Proverbs 19, verse 21. Proverbs 19, verse 21. There are, there are many plans in, in a man's heart. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord counsel that will stand. That, I love this scripture. There are many plans in the man's heart. Yes, in every man's heart, there are many plans in everybody's heart. There are many plans. If, you, if, if, I can, if I can broadcast my plan in my heart, you have no idea. If everybody can walk around and broadcast their plan at the TV station, at the TV channel or radio, it's crazy. I mean, daily plan, small plan, long plan, shorter plan, short-term plan, long-term plan, uh, immediate-term plan, all kind of planning. Now watch this. Nevertheless, but the Lord's plan, the Lord counsel, the Lord final decision, the Lord final pre-designed idea and plan for you is what was going to stand. That's marvelous and that's powerful. No matter what direction you take in life, if you are a person, a beloved person of God, you're just going to end up being there. Amen? You're just going to end up. So this verse does not mean that the Lord will cancel all your plan. You know, I heard this when the religious spectrum misinterpreted this scripture. Whenever somebody is facing a failure, you're going to throw it into his face. There, is many, there are many, uh, many are the plan of a man in his heart, okay? Nevertheless, it's the Lord counsel that is going to say, that does not, this verse does not mean that God is going to cancel all your plan out, okay? And superimpose to you his own plan. No, 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 no. 
This verse does not mean, I repeat, that the Lord will cancel all your plan and then put his own plan. This verse does not mean that it's not good to have plans, okay? Yes, the Bible does not negate you not having plans. That's why I'm encouraging you, every young man, every man, go ahead and have plans for your life and stick to those plans, okay? It means that you can have a lot of plans. You can have a lot of plan, but the final big plan of the Lord is what will be manifested. Okay? The final big plan of the Lord, that which your mind cannot comprehend, is what, is what will be, okay, manifested. Now, me being here at the studio, you watching me, may sound so small, but it may sound like this is my plan, which, yeah, which is, of course, is my plan to be talking to you so you can listen to me. It's my plan. I framed it. I designed it. That's my lot of plan unto God. Bigger plan. Bigger, bigger plan that we don't comprehend. We don't understand. Okay? Now, watch this. It means that God's decision about your life is stronger than yours. Ooh, that's good. The decisions of God about your life are stronger than yours. When you are thinking about a cup of water, God is thinking about a bottle of water. When you are thinking about a bottle of water, God is thinking about a whole 32 pack of water. When you are thinking about having a whole 32 pack of water, God is probably thinking about giving you a whole water, mineral water manufacturing uh, plant. Are we listening? So now, that means God's decision about your life are stronger, more, much more powerful than your own personal decisions. Okay? It means that God's plan of salvation will hit you. Okay? You become a Christian before you even know it. I've seen some people, there are half, there are half years. They're like, I'm not going to believe in God. No way, Jose. Never. Never, 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 and never. Well, I, I'm sitting and I'm watching them. And then one day I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, uh, what you doing at church? Well, I said, well, the Lord convinced my heart to come to church. I said, didn't you tell me that you're never going to be living? I said, well, I don't know, but something came on me and I came to church. So it was this person plan to never be at church. It was this person plan to never believe in God. But little do we know God has a better plan to capture his heart so he can come. To, and I've seen this countless times. Countless times. A man filed a divorce paper. Say, I'm leaving my wife. And then after a while, he left. Three, four, five, six years later, he come right back, re, uh, uh, redated his wife, remarried her. They're living the best life today. Why? Because he had all, it has always been God's plan to never separate those two people. Now, because the devil is at work and we are very fragile before sometimes the devil, because we are so weak, he can see, it can seem that the devil's plan is working. But at the end of it, it's God's name that will be glorified because God knows how to turn it around to his advantage. God, remember this, God never lose anything. Never. God never lose the game. When God loses, he wins. When God wins, he wins. I got to understand this. That's what the Bible says. All things, not some things, not any things. All things, the good, the bad, the sour, the, the sweet, the ups, the down, the middle. All things, all things, the white, the yellow, the, the big, the skinny, whatever that is. The poor, the riches, the money, the blessing, the nothing, the many more. God works together for those that love God. And this Sadie series is about those that love God. Amen. So now watch this. So there are many devices, there are many devices in a man's heart. Some people about bad thing, about carnal thing. Some people is to get wealth and rich. Okay? Some people is to obtain honor and glory among men. Some people is to obtain a good long life. Some people is to perpetuate their memory after death. Some people is to live a sinful life. 
Some, people, so, so, some, some other people is to gratify the carnal lust and, se and sexual appetite uh, that can make them, okay, uh, run away from salvation, okay? But Jesus can purge them out of all those plans and set them to the right course. So, so the plan of God, the plan of God, you got to understand this. Now I'm going to say something very important. The plan of God, okay, and the will of God go together. The good plan of God, the good plan of God, and the will of God are all the same thing. Now remember what Jesus said. When Jesus was about to die at the cross and he prayed three times, he said, Father, not my will, but your will. What does that tell me? It tells me that Jesus has his own plan. And in Jesus' plan, if he wished he would not die at the cross, he wouldn't die. He, he wished he wouldn't die at the cross. He wished he was probably going to die, but die of a different death. But the perfect plan of his father is for him to die like a sinner at the cross so that we can be redeemed. So Jesus is negotiating his plan versus his father's plan. Now, we all have plan because we live in a certain realm that is corrupt. It's corrupt. It's easy to, to get lost. That system in which we live in can also try to fight the perfect plan of God for us. Now, the best thing we need to do is sometimes to say, Lord, what is best for me in this situation in prayer? And I want to pray for somebody right here that is confused. You have many options ahead of you and you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to go about this problem. And my prayer for you is that you pray along with me and ask God, what? Is God perfect way in this matter? What is God? A young lady came to me. She fell in love with this guy, and they 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 are having all this thing. And and I told her, you know, and she, the the boy is about five years younger than the man, the the, the girl. And I'm like, okay, um, the way he started is wrong, and the parent of the girl, the parent of the young man, are not into that relationship. They are mad. And I'm, I'm telling to this young lady and to this young man, I don't have nothing against you, but I'm going to speak to you the truth, okay? You all fall back for a minute. Let us pray, all right? Let us pray and see what's God's perfect will for you. Because for, 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 for working God, with God for so many years, for so many years, about 20 years, I come to understand that everything God does has a perfection connotation. It is perfect for man. It's not meant to make you suffer. Everything God planned for us, even though it can start with pain, by the end it will be joyful and rejo uh, 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 and enjoyment. So y'all fall back. Let's pray and seek God's will in this matter. What? Hey, people are just people. They didn't want to have it. They went on and moved on with their, 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 their activities, which is fine. For me, I'm fine. I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna whine about it. I'm not gonna cry about it. This is not my life. I'm just helping as a pastor and a life coach. But, but, I'm not messing up. I'm not jinxing. I'm, jinxing. I'm not saying, I'm not being negative. But the way I'm looking at it, it probably will not end well because I can feel it. But I'm just praying. I'm just praying that at the end, God's will, the God's perfect will, happen for them. Amen? So, the plans of God, the plan of God and the will of God go together, okay? So, the plan of God is more like the perfect will of God. God's plan is also his purpose, his intent, and his perfect desire. God's plan is his intent, his perfect purpose, and his perfect desire. This God's plan, okay, regard his whole creation and also individual. Amen. The, the, now, God will, God's will and plan is not met uh, by many people. That's true. No matter how God, good God is, God will not shave his plan into your throat and say, swallow it now or I kill you. No. God doesn't force people like that. No. 
Eight billion, nearly eight billion people living on earth, created by God. God has planned for each and every one of them. But remember this, it's not those eight billion people living on earth that will ever see the plan of God. Yes, I repeat, yes, Man, this, that's why you want to be Christian because many of the promises in the Bible, if you are a son of Abraham, but Abraham by faith, many of the promises will be fall on you. Amen. So some people will never fulfill the plan of God, the perfect plan of God. Why? Because, because they are not turned onto the frequency of God. They are rather turned into the frequency of the devil. Oh, yes. Because they are turned into the frequency of this earth, willing to run after things. The Bible says vanity of vanity. All things are vanity. Okay? Running after things, doing things here and there that are fruitful activities. Amen. So, no matter how good God is, some of God's plans, some people will never see God's plan for their life. Someone by the name of uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, a very well-known man, late Dr. Miles Monroe, he says something. He says, the, the richest place on earth is not, is not a bank. The richest place on earth is not a federal bank. The richest place of, er, of earth is not even the oil petroleum reservoir, okay? Oil uh, reservoir, okay? Uh, the richest place on earth is not the, the place where, you know, uh, we stack, the federal government stack, stack their gold, okay, or their precious stones. The richest place on earth is as a cemetery. Yes, the richest place on earth is as a, at the cemetery because 95% of people laying there in those caskets, those are people that did not get to fulfill the absolute plan of God for their life. Some of them died early because they choose to engorge themselves with bad substances. So they die of overdose. You think it was God's plan? No, it was not God's plan. God's plan are always good, even though they start bad, they're always good. Some people overdo sugar, overate sugar, and they died of that. Do you think it was God's plan? It wasn't God's plan. So when it's not God's plan, it means that the perfect plan of God that should have happened to you for you to live a good life, did never, you never saw it. So this person is being buried with money into the bosom, with books into the life, with treasures into them, but they never get to tap into it because the devil was able to push on their choices and they made bad choices. Amen? Many, many that fail to access God's plan are those who refuse to mature. Yes, we're going to talk about it in our next shows. If people refuse to access, if you ever see someone that refuses to access God's plan, it's because he's not mature in understanding and wisdom. And I'm going to explain this in our next shows. But those who mature in the spirit always access God's plan, God's perfect will. The Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 4 verse 12, Epiphras, who is one of you, a bond servant, okay, a bond servant of Christ greets you, always laboring fervently in you, uh, for, your, for you in prayer that you may stand firm and complete in all the will of God. You may stand firm praying that you may stand firm and perfect and complete in all the will of God. So now watch this. Apostle Paul is praying. And Apostle Paul is saying that there is a brother called a, 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 a Paphras, okay, who is one of the servants, greets you, and he is always praying that the people in Colossus, in the church of Colossus, will perfectly and completely fulfill the will, the perfect will of God. So yes, this is a prayer point. If you don't know the will of God, or if you already know the will of God, you must pray to to, to perfectly, perfectly complete the will of God because the will of God is also the blessing of God for generation. And the enemy, the devil, does not like people that wants to fulfill the will of God because if you fulfill the will of God, you're never going to live a regretful life. He's going to attack you, bombard your thought with negative decision-making thought, and then you make the wrong decision so you can miss the mark, Okay? Uh, 
Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things, all things work together for those to, to those who love God. All things work together for those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Some people are called according to God's purpose. And for those people, you and I, all things, all things work together. <laughs> all things, all things, everything, all things, they work together, all things. Even when the devil comes in, they work for our advantage. Even when people hate us, it works for us. Even when people fight against us, it works for us. Even when people help us, it works. All things, all things, all things, everything work together. They work all together. They intertwine. They mix together. And they create a certain mixture, mixture, okay, that, 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 that work according to God's purpose in our life. And that, so that there is no mistakes in our life. The Bible says, who shall, who shall condemn the elect one? That's why it's very important to be a good child of God. Once you're a good child of God and you are into God's hands, all things work for you. Everything works for you. What The sour works for you. The salted works for you. The, the, the sweet works for you. The bitter works for you. The, the blessing works for you. The poverty, the riches, the, the wealth, the, the sickness, the, the health, the ups, the down, the, the cry, the laughter, the joy, the anxiety, the depression, the sickness, the, 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 the victory, the battle, the warfare. Everything intertwined together, messed up together, works for you. So it's for your advantage, it's for your benefit when you are a called one, when you walk according to the purpose of God and when you are a righteous one. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it all joy. In another word, count it and make it your own. Count it and let it play to your favor. Count it and rejoice when you fall into various trials. Count it. It works for you. Amen. Verse 3. Knowing, knowing that the testing of your faith produces something called patience. In another word, everything that you think is working against you, basically, normally, according to the purpose of God for you as a righteous man, as a kingdom citizen, is working for you. It's not working against you. When people are trying to work against you, what it really means for you as a believer, they are working for you. All things work for you. Why? It works for you because it's going to produce something good that money cannot buy. Money cannot buy patience. But the trial of our life that works for us, not against us, produces something that is the fruit of the Spirit, which is a virtue of God. Now remember this. On in our journey on earth, many things are to be enjoyed, are enjoyed, enjoyed, okay? On our journey on earth, many things are to be enjoyed, all right? One of the things that we need to enjoy is the presence of God and his glory. Amen. And all things work together for the glory of God. Verse 4, but let patience have its perfect work. So once, once patience is birth out of the trial that you face fulfilling the will and the plan of God, you're going to have to let it work in a perfect manner that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Oh my God. Imagine a life where you lack nothing. Why? Because things that seem to work against you, you looked at it as a complete joy. You accepted it. You were stoic to it. You accepted it. You let it work in you so that it can shape you at the image of God. Remember this. As we are on earth and we are walking the journey of salvation, things that God is working on us is to make us look perfect, suitable to the blessing God is going to give. A man of God told me once, he said, Eric, in heaven there is no problem of oil, but on earth there is a problem of re recipient. Who is going to receive what God has prepared? So when God is designing his plan and you are going through pain, basically what he's trying to do is to shape you in such a way that you'll be at the image of his son so that every blessing that his son could have received, if he was still on earth, you would receive it.
That's all. God is a good father. I was sitting there and I, you know what, well, actually I was driving. And as I was driving, I'm looking at the frame and I'm looking at people and then the driving and the roads and the, the, the buildings and companies. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow. Which one and among all those people know God and listen to God? Many people go about their days and they don't even think there is a God and they don't really care or they don't really pray. However, 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 God still loves people. God still loves people. That's a good God father. God loves people that even don't care about him. Love is one of the most powerful ingredients on earth in the whole universe. Love can do all. And God loves us. God loves the sinners. So much so that he makes sure that even when you are a sinner, you have the basic minimum as a father. A father that loves his most evil man, his most evil servant, his mo most evil child, his most evil daughter. Imagine that. That's the love of God and no money can buy that love. Amen. When we read the book of First uh, Peter chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible says, For it is better if it is well or if it is the will of God to suffer for, for doing good than to do evil. Well, God bless you into the system of the plan of God. The plan of God is powerful. And I want to pray for you that, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you bless someone here. I want to pray that you promote them to another level. And people that are confused and living difficult lives because the enemy is trying to mess them up. So they'll be confused about your plan. Lord, bring clarity, clear things out so that they can live a good life. I pray for every Christian to get back up and follow the will of God and the plan of God. Thank you, Lord. If you don't have a place to worship, I'm on 2850 North 31st Street, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.